Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well, you and your family members. This morning, I wanted to share a thought with you that came to me. Um, the thought is, come out of victimhood. Uh, many times we go through trauma, all of us. No one will escape trauma in this life, no matter who you are. But it's how we deal with this trauma. Are we choosing to use this trauma to grow from it? Are we choosing to heal? Or are we using this trauma as a crutch? You know, something to hold on to. And I am in no way victim blaming. That's not, that's not my, my purpose. Uh, my fundamental purpose is to encourage healing because I've seen the value of healing in my own life. So I know that there's a better way of being. There's a better way of being. And that's why I've come to you this morning to share this with you. Uh, two scriptures came to mind. The first is Hebrews 4 verse 12, reading from the NIV. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Now, what that means is God can change us from the inside out. Many times we go through things and they change us from the inside out. They make us harsh and they make us cold. But what the scripture is saying to us is we don't have to remain in that state. We don't have to remain in the state that our trauma has left us in. We can choose to heal. But sometimes some people have become so dependent on playing the victim. Sometimes... This is not even a conscious decision to play victim. It just becomes a part of who they are as an individual. And they determine their life, their life's choices around playing the victimhood or playing the victim. But this morning, I'm inviting us all to take a look, to take a reflective look at ourselves and determine if our life's choices have been based on just that. Being the victim. Being the victim of our circumstances. Do we allow people to choose us? Because we have remained the victim for so long. Or are we choosing consciously and deliberately? Because we are all given choices every day. And we are the masters of our destinies. Whether or not we see it that way. The other scripture that comes forcefully to mind is Romans 8 verse, uh, verse 37. And this is from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much so that he died for us. Now let's look critically at what this, this text is saying to us. Prior to this verse, Paul outlined so many things that have the potential to, to make us victims, to make us accept a negative mindset. Talked about poverty, talked about sickness, talked about rejection, but then he, he, he reassesses the situation in verse 37 and he says, hold on a minute. That verse yet speaks to a contradiction. Sorry, that word yet speaks to a contradiction. So he contradicts everything that he had said before in that one word yet. Yet can mean despite of or in spite of. So he says, in spite of all that 
you've been through, in spite of all that I've been through, in all of those things, the good, the bad, the indifferent, we are not just conquerors, but we're more than conquerors. And he says, not just that, most times we quote the scripture, we leave it at more than conquerors, but Paul didn't leave it at that. That would leave room for us to uh, stop short and accept a part of the blessing, so to speak. He goes on to say, and, that word and is a conjunction. It means additional to what I've just said. Gain an overwhelming victory. So those two words are powerful. Conquerors, victory. Victory means to be successful in whatever feat you put your mind to. And he says, this is, this is important too. Not through you, not through me, not through our families, not through our family names, not through our friends, but through him who loved us. So much that he died for us. Now, I'm not a martyr in any way. Not even my children, I don't think I would be. I would volunteer to die for. But here we have Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The very manifestation in flesh of God himself. Who came to earth, saw a people who were wretched, who were undone. And that genealogy continues even to today. You know, we still have that sin DNA imprinted on our, in ourselves. So we, we, for the most part, we are still that. But he didn't die for us to stay that way. He didn't die for us to stay in our mess. He didn't die for us to stay in our traumas. He died so that healing can happen. And I feel like one of the fundamental ways that healing can happen is starting up here. To change your minds. Because really, if you think about it, that's what repentance means. To change our minds. To turn away from things that we previously enjoyed doing. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that's going to be easier. It's, it's automatic. It's not. Like I said, sin has been imprinted on our DNA. So it's a daily dropping off. Paul himself says, I die daily. So we have to die daily to ourselves. What that means is die daily to the things that previously triggered us, that previously inspired us. And now we have to accept the healing that's available to us and come out of victimhood. Come out of victimhood and come into the brotherhood. The Bible calls us the beloved ears. We're joint ears with Christ. Now, while Christ walked on her earth, he healed, he delivered, he set free. That was his fundamental mission. A part of his fundamental mission. To heal, deliver, and set free. Meaning that he doesn't want us to remain traumatized by things that have happened to us. And while those things were happening to us, some people might say, well, where was God when all this was happening? Where was God when my loved one died? Where was God when I was being abused verbally or physically, mentally or emotionally? Where was God? God was right there with you all the time. But you see, I posted before about um, purpose in pain. It's up to us to find the purpose of our pain, to let our, our pain speak to us, to let our pain instruct us. But oftentimes what happens is the pain is so overwhelming. And trust me, I know about pain. The pain becomes so overwhelming that we become stuck. We become stuck in a scenario. We become stuck in a situation. We become spectators in our own lives because the pain is so overwhelming but this morning through the word of God through the power of the Holy Ghost I'm calling us to come out of victimhood and to come into the brotherhood to come into the brotherhood 
where healing is available. To come into a brotherhood where the Son of God died for us to have to gain victory. And prior to gaining victory, to become more than conquerors. Let's not stay in a stagnant state. Let's not stay in a perpetual state of victim, of playing the victim. And I understand that over the years, some people have used being a victim to their advantage, you know, to manipulate, to circumvent, to, to, to have their own way. But the Bible says that the word of God is quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than, a two, than any two-edged sword, piercing even to dividing asunder. So, I wish that, my wish is that this word of God this morning that came to me so forcefully, that woke me up this morning after five to speak into my spirit. I pray that this word will cut through spirit, cut through bone, cut through marrow to perform the miracle of healing that is required for us to move to the next level. To level up, as they say, we cannot stay in the same state forever and expect that things are going to change. We cannot have, we cannot be of the same mindset every year, like in a cycle, going around, going around, having the same mindset. That's not going to lead to any positive or permanent change. We have to change our mindset and the word of God is here quick and powerful it's here to cut through all dogmas to cut through old ideologies to cut through old ways of thinking to cut through old ways of being to bring us up out of our past to bring us up because what happened is when trauma happens the flight or fl or flight the fright or flight response usually kicks in and either we decide to flee, either in a physical sense or emotionally, flee and become locked somewhere in ourselves. Or because we're so scared, we stay frozen in that one place, mentally, emotionally, and sometimes physically, unable to come up out of that circumstance. But this morning, I'm calling us. I'm calling out my brothers and sisters. I'm calling us to come out of victimhood. There's so much work to be done in the kingdom. There's so many souls that are depending on us to be the best version of ourselves. There's a saying that hurting people hurt others. Right? And many times people come into our space who need healing. But because we need healing too, we end up damaging those people. We, we have to do better, not just for others. Not for our spouses or not for our family members, but for ourselves. We owe that to ourselves, to seek healing. Jesus did the groundwork. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Many of us were so lost, we didn't know we were lost. But he has done that work. He has already done the work. He paid it all for us not to remain victims of our circumstances. Not to remain victims of things that happened to us, things that we had no control over. Many of these things happened in childhood and we had no control over them. But now we do, through the word of God, through the powerful word of God, healing is available. Healing is available. And also, don't just bear all your burdens alone. There must be one person that you can talk about your situation with. I'm not saying go and broadcast your, your situation on Facebook or wherever. But there must be one person, one trusted person of your, your, your in crowd that you can talk to. You can call and say, this has been resting on me and I have to share. Sometimes it's through sharing that we overcome. The Bible speaks of the power of the testimony. How we overcome through our testimony. The Bible also talks about death and life in the power of the tongue that's the other thing sometimes we speak against ourselves the bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper 
And sometimes our, our, our greatest weapon is our tongue. We speak negative things about ourselves. And how the brain works, how, how, what I've learned in the last few years, how the brain works is that whatever you, are, you, you, you feed yourself, the mind, the brain will go looking for confirming data. So if I tell myself that I'm nothing, if I tell myself that I'm myself that I'm useless, if I tell myself that I'm a victim of my situation and that's all I'm ever going to be, ta-da, that's what I remain. But if I start to speak the word of God into my spirit, first say it internally so that you can change the voice in your head. Start to say the repeat the scriptures in your head. I'm more than conqueror. I am blessed because the word of God says I'm blessed. Then after a while you start to speak it out of your mouth. So the word when you when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you have the same creative power that was at work in creation. So you can start to create a new life, a new way of being for yourself through the words that we speak. There's this terminology now called, you know, everybody's manifesting manifesting this and manifesting that you can use the word of god to manifest a new life a new way of thinking a new way of being we don't have to stay stuck we can heal healing is available it's everywhere people are healing around us every day either in a physical sense or an emotional sense but the first part of healing is to admit that there is a problem there's an issue if we stay in denial about our situations, then there is no way we're going to change because God is a gentleman. He's not going to push down our doors and come in and do for us what we're not ready for. Because if he gives us a blessing that we're not ready for, it is just as destructive as staying stuck. A huge blessing is just as detri detrimental as a curse and that's what i've come to realize healing is available heal first go after healing go after your peace pursue peace with everything that's in you and that peace can only come through healing gratitude heals too gratitude heals the Bible says that in all things, we should give thanks. Not for all things, but in all things. And I found that once you start to do that, well, personally, your mindset changes and you start to see things with new eyes from a different perspective your perspective will change when you become grateful when i become grateful the bible also says godliness with contentment is great gain so yes we are godly and we're going about going to church doing the things reading the bible but are we content and content in that context doesn't mean that we become lackadaisical and accept life as it is. Contentment there means that we accept what God is offering to us. Because there are so many blessings tied up in, for, in being godly, in living a God-centered life. But let's learn to be content with what we have so that God can give us more. Many times we complain about the little things that we don't have because we look across and we see the big things that other people have without even questioning, how did they get that? Your things are waiting. Your blessings are waiting for you. My blessings are waiting for me. But sometimes in order for the breakthrough to come, in order for the breakthrough to happen, it requires a mindset, a change in heart. Come up out of victimhood and come into the brotherhood. If you're a victim, if you've accepted victimhood, it you you have automatically accepted that you're not a part of the beloved. You're not a part of the the brotherhood. 
So this morning, I encourage you, encourage you as I encourage myself to accept your, the brotherhood that's there for us, all of us, and to come up out of victimhood.